child is this? I've asked myself this question for about three years now. Thirsty for an answer since the day he was born. What did I know then of great and mighty things? I was just a young girl fetching water that day when the stranger appeared with those curious words. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. He must have seen the change in my face, the one I now know to be an angel. Do not be afraid, he whispered. You will be pregnant with God's son. And he will be great, this child, forever and ever. And he will rescue his people. That was the exact moment. It was more than curiosity. I thirsted for more and mustered the courage to say yes. And so it began, year after year, the thirst. I watched and listened in silence as he was visited by shepherds and scholars, all with stories of angels and stars and grand pronouncements. One day, I found him in the temple speaking wisdom to men old enough to be his grandfather. And I, in awe, and I am thirsty. The very next day, he sits right at Joseph's feet, and he learns, with no complaint, how to work the wood. And now, he's all grown up. My boy. I watched him do and say curious things. And the angel's words come right back to me. He will be great, this child. And I hear my boy say, I am living water. Do I drink? Do I dare drink? I remember swaddling him, holding him, singing to him. Yes, I have been the favored one. To see him grow into a man, what will he do? My baby, my boy, this man, my God, yes! I look back on that day, 30 years ago now, and I remember holding him so close. So thankful to be his mother. Knowing this will be no ordinary child. I am thirsty, yes. But I do believe I know where to find the water. We remember the Christmas story. Um, I want us to remember that God did not only come to seek just certain people. He came to seek all. And we've been covering these characters. And this week, it's, it's Mary's turn. And I want you to turn your Bibles over to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35. And as you do that, I'm just going to pray for us. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your scriptures, Lord God. 
Lord, your scriptures are good, Lord God. They're good for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and equipping us, Lord God. Equip us this morning, Lord God, to receive your word, to receive your scriptures, Lord God, to, to get an understanding, Father God, of these characters that we've been sharing, Father God, here today, Lord God, that, Lord, uh, they, they, they define who you are, Father God. They're a reflection of you, Lord God. And I just ask, Lord God, that, Lord, we would open our hearts, we would open our ears, Lord God, to receive your word this morning. Amen and amen. 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 In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Verse 34, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Can we say amen to that? Amen. What child is this? What child is this? Jesus, a great child, Son of the Most High, a child who will reign, his kingdom will never end, and the Holy One. And it's interesting to know how God uses people, ordinary people, to do extraordinary things. And in this case, we have Mary, how God uses her to be the mother of the Holy One, the Holy One. And I want you to understand that there's nothing particularly unusual about Mary. She was not from a wealthy family. She came from Nazareth. Um, and, 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 and in John chapter 1, verse 46, the scripture says that Nazareth... What comes out of nothing? Nothing. Any no, nothing good comes out of there. It, it just, it's just this little small town. What good can come out of there? Can anything come good from there? And when the angel appeared to this teenage girl, she was engaged to be married. Maybe 14, 15, 16 years old. And think about this: it was every little girl's dream to to be the one. Okay, and you have this young girl who, who, who wasn't expecting anything to happen to her, nothing extraordinary, but all of a sudden God picks her, and she's the one. She's about 15 years old. She must have been a wonderful, a wonderful young girl to be selected the one out of all the women in the world to be the one, to bear, to bear the, the, the son of God. To be, so think about it, all these women. But see, God didn't choose her just because she was worthy of anything like that. She was highly favored, okay, because who, who's, who's worthy is Jesus, who, who we praise is Jesus, okay? We, 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 we respect Mary, amen, the mother of Jesus. We respect her, but who we, who we worship, who, who's worthy is, is, is the Lord, but she was favored. That's a good thing. She was favored. In the scripture, scripture in verse 28 says that the angel said to Mary, Greetings, you are highly favored. You are highly favored. And the Greek word is translated to me, charito, which means highly blessed, much graced, special honor, and to be accepted. And over and over we see in the scriptures, folks, that God chooses undeserving people, okay, undeserving people, and God looks all the way from heaven down to choose this woman. God had his eye on her. There was favor to Mary. God had his eye on her because God said, who is the one who's going to love? Who is the one that's going to take care of this child? Who is the one that's going to feed and protect this child? Mary was favored. Okay, that's something special there. But can I tell you something? We're also favored as well. We are favored as well. 
Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 6, look at the favor that God gives us as well, okay? We got to understand this hook because who we worship is God. We respect Mary. Mary's an amazing woman of God, and you see how amazing she was, okay? But God favors us too. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. That's favor right there. In the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing, that's favor right there in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world. He chose us before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons. We are his sons and daughters and his children. That's a blessing to be adopted by Jesus, by the Father. So we are blessed. We are spiritually blessed. He's adopted his sons and his daughters so we can have a relationship with him according to with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely, folks, freely, can you say freely, freely. given us in the one he loves. Folks, these blessings, these spiritual blessings, they are free. Amen. There's, you don't have to, there's no rebates here. This, it's free. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. It's a blessing, folks. It's a blessing. We can see that we too are highly favored, folks. Everybody in the body of Christ is highly favored. But, but you have to confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. That's how favor kicks in. Amen? Amen. We are highly favored, not because of who we are, but because who we are in Christ, folks. And the moment that you start to seize and to see yourselves as undeserving instruments, unqualified, unblessed, unprivileged, chances are that you start to paralyze yourself for what God is calling you to do, what God has called every single person in this room, folks. Jesus said, <laughs> blessed are those who hear the word and obey it. They will be blessed more than Mary. In that respect, you and I, we are favored because God calls us, folks, to a special purpose in your life, in my life, in the life of this church, and that is to ignite the gospel of Jesus Christ because you are favored. You are blessed. You are his sons and his daughters. Amen. You have been adopted. That is favor right there. That is favor right there, folks. Just like Mary, she said, you know, I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's servant. And over the past two weeks, we've shared reflections, comparisons uh, of the characters for those who proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, folks. And this week, we want to have a reflection of Jesus and Mary. And there are certain reflections and attributes in the life of Jesus that you can reflect back to his father, but you can also reflect back to Mary, Okay, and just because, you know, there are attributes and reflections of a mother, th guys, that does not make us any less of a male. It's a good thing that our mothers, okay, that a mother shares and gives us good things, that she loves us. So it's okay to have the love that I have. I believe that the Lord has given to my mom and that love that I share with you guys and that, that attitude and that spark of love I really become, comes from the Lord that was given to my mother because my mom is a loving, loving, caring person. But my father on the other hand, Pastor Javier, is he hardcore or what? My father on the other hand, he's hardcore. But that's what my mother has, has, has my, the Lord and my mother has blessed me with those things, folks. And it's important to understand that God designs and imprints and, and, and some of the reflections that you, you are exposed to in your life, they come from the Father, and they also may come from your mother and things like that because God uses people. You know, you're a, you, your, your DNA comes from above to your family, to your children, to the kingdom of God. Amen? Are you with me? And we see that Jesus himself, he was loving, he was passionate, he was tender. And, and, and those are the things, those are the things that God was looking for this woman, for them to be... Favored, very, very, I'm using the word very loving, compassionate, and patient. That's what he was looking for. So he, God was selective and saying, I need someone to be very loving, compassionate, and patient just like I am. That's a heavy-duty task. I need someone, I need a woman who's going to feed, protect, to discipline the Savior. What a task. 
Think about the task, the task of a mother, of a great child, the son of the most high, the child who will reign, the child whose kingdom will never end, the holy one. Imagine having the task of being the mother of Jesus. Think about it. Think about how, how difficult it is to discipline our children, how difficult it is to raise our children. But to have the task of a great child, the son of the most high, the holy one, how in the world am I going to raise this young man? Think about that task. God was very selective. I need someone very specific, someone who's loving, someone who's compassionate, someone who's patient, someone who's tender, just like I am, to raise this child. Think about it. An amazing, an amazing task. Who would be put up to be the mother of Jesus? Think about the pressure. Think about this. When Jesus was a little boy, Okay, think about this. When Jesus was a little boy, you know, his parents go out to the feast, the Passover feast. He was about 12 years old. The parents are, are, are hanging out. They had, they're at this feast. And all of a sudden, Jesus, 12 years old, disappears. Yeah, Jesus disappears. The parents are start looking for him. Okay, the scripture says that the relatives and Joseph and Mary, they're looking for him. There's an amber alert on Jesus. Anybody know what an amber alert is? There's an amber alert on Jesus. They're, they're trying to find him. He's gone for three days. Do we follow a missing person, child, or anything like that? He's gone. He's missing. And, you know, just like the, the, the skit just displayed, where was he? He was at the temple. He was having a ball, walking around in the temple, hearing the word of God, asking questions. Okay? The people, they were amazed at this, this young boy, 12 years old, of his teaching, of his understanding. And think about it. Think about Mary now. How does she discipline this young boy? He's Jesus. He's the Holy One. Am I going to pull his ears? Am I going to spank him? I, I think about it. I, how do I handle this? But let me tell you what the, the scripture says. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Jesus responds, why are you searching for me? He asked, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? It says, but they did not understand what he was saying. Then he went, listen to this, then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. Think about the pressure the responsibility. I'm the favored one. You're telling me I got to take care of Jesus. How am I? How am I do I pull his ears? Do I pull his ears? Do I, do I expect? Do I put him in time out when we go back home? Think about the responsibility. But I am certain that Jesus was like, it's okay, ma. And I'm sure as he was walking back home with them, I'm sure Mary wasn't thinking of putting him in time out or anything. She was just probably in awe of what this young man was doing. And I can see just baby Jesus walking and just probably looking at her and saying, Mommy, if you only knew, Mommy, if you only knew that I'm going to heal the sick, Mommy, if you only knew that I'm going to heal the blind, Mommy, if you only knew that I'm going to do the moonwalk on water, Mommy, if you only knew I'm going to feed 5,000 people, Mommy, if you only knew that I am going to defeat death. Think about that. Think about the responsibility. How do, you, how do you handle that? With patience, with love, compassion, tenderness. That's why she was selected, folks. Those are the reflections, the attributes of Mary. Amen? And when you look at, when you look at the Bible, you know, we, we focus on, on, on how the Father disciplines us, how the Father shares His Word, but God also uses certain language, motherly language, to describe His love, His passion, His compassion for us, because God is the Father to the fatherless, but God also fathers us and uses motherly language to comfort us, amen? God is the Father to the fatherless, but He uses motherly language to comfort us. To comfort us, folks, in Isaiah, folks, 66, 13 is a great example. We see God comforting his people like a mother comforts a child. It says, as, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. And you will be comforted over Jerusalem, folks. 
the Lord compares himself to a mother. He identifies himself as a strong father, but as tender as a nurturing mother. He's comparing himself. Isaiah 49, 15, we see God compared to a nursing mother who would never, get his, who would never forget his child. Think about this. Verse 15, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Can a woman forget her nursing child that she would have not compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Folks, the Lord will not forget you. Folks, you are, we are his babies. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He is with you. He goes before you, folks. I, 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 we have to understand he will never, ever leave you. And when you think, when you think that you've been forgotten, or if you have this doubt that you've been forgotten, just look at the cross. Look at the cross and just look at the cross. Look at the, 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 the crucifixion and look at the fact that God engraved in his palms those nails for our sins. That's a perfect image of the fact that, you know, that they're engraved, his palms. It just tells you that he's, he hasn't forgotten you. He will never forget you. We are his babies. We are his children. We have been adopted by him. It's amazing how he loves us, folks, how he loves us, folks. Now, we see that Jesus and Mary, they, they all have these characteristics and reflections of love, kindness, patience, uh, passion, and, 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 and all these things. But what, one of the things, one of the things that, that they have so in common is, is this. Availability and submission put together. This availability and submission that takes place with Jesus and Mary. Availability and submission. I am the Lord's servant. Luke 138, I am the Lord's servant. That's what Mary answered. May your word to be, be fulfilled, folks. This is where Mary surrenders. I am the Lord's servant, folks. Listen to this. I humbly tell you this. Availability triggers submission. I'm humble. That's Pastor Miguel's quote. Availability triggers submission, man. Because when you're available, folks, and you follow through this submission. I was having a conversation with a couple today, uh, and, and, and we were talking about, man, it's so good that you follow through. When you follow through, man, that's, that's, you're available. You submit yourself to the Lord. And it's amazing what God does when we are available and we submit to the Lord because availability triggers Submission. Availability strength submission. And that's exactly what happened to Mary. She simply responded, I am the Lord's servant. You are my master. I am your servant. I'm willing to give up my body. I'm willing to go nine months, nine months of pregnancy. I'm willing to do all those things. I'm willing to carry this baby. Your, this wound is yours. You are my master. Those are the things that she surrendered. She submitted. She made herself avail available. She was willing. She was willing. Can you say willing if you're up with me? Willing. She was willing, folks, to be available and to submit. I want you to think about this. Think about the fear, the criticism, the gossip, how scandalous this what, what have been, she was just a young child. She was like 15 years old, and all of a sudden, okay, she gets pregnant. Back then, if you, if, you were, if you had a baby and you weren't married, they would stone you to death. They would put you to death. I can relate to that because I, I was 15 when, when, I, when, when we had Ricky, okay? And can I say something? I, it, it, was, it, was, it was tough. It was, my father-in-law was looking for me with a, a shotgun. <laughs> A shotgun. This is a story, folks. He was looking for me. Okay, I was hiding for about three weeks. Okay, all over Upham's Corner, folks. If you're from the neighborhood, I was hiding for three weeks. So think about it. She was a target. Think about Joseph as well. Hey, Mary tells him, "Hey, listen, I'm, I'm pregnant." By who? <laughs> think about. Think about that. Okay, think, think, think about all the chaos that's going. But you know, she she says, "You know what?" 
God's got an agenda. I want to link myself with this agenda and submit myself and be available for God's agenda. That's what she does. And before you know it, she's going through heartache. She's going through all this opposition. And next thing you know, this young lady, okay, is watching her son at the cross, folks. But she made herself available and she submitted. Availability triggers submission. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to be, may your word to me be fulfilled, folks. Availability triggers submission. What about Jesus now? See the reflection here? He's praying at the Garden of Gethsemane. He's about to pray about this mission that God has called him. This, he's, he's there. He's praying. And he su- humbly submits to his father there. The scriptures tell us that he kneels down, that he's praying. He says, Father, if it's your will, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And he's right there. Lord, I, I, I need you. I submit to you, but I need you to strengthen me. What happens? God sends an angel to strengthen him, to strengthen him there. And he gets strengthened right there. And, and, and the scriptures tell us that he, as, as he was in anguish, he prayed more earnestly with a purpose, intentionally. He was praying to the fact that when he was praying, that he was sweating and the sweat of, 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 of drops became a, a blood. Okay? And he says, let your will be done. <laughs> I'm going to be submissive, folks. Jesus was committed to his purpose to be the savior of the world. Can you see the reflection, the submission of Mary, the availability, also Jesus, he's available, he's submissive. Can you see that that God sends an angel to Mary? (laughs) He sends an angel to Jesus as well. These are the things that, these are a reflection of the things that are in common with these folks that we've been sharing. I don't know what God and when God is going to send something to you, but pay attention. Pay attention because God's going to send something, someone to you. And the question is, are you going to be available? Are you going to be submissive to say, you know what? My coworker who's been struggling with his health and all those things, are you going to be available and pull the trigger and say, listen, why don't you come to church on Christmas Day? Okay, it's just like pulling the trigger, you know. It's just, you have to pull the trigger sometimes in order for the weapon to fire and to respond. We ourselves have to be available and we ourselves have to pull the trigger so God can work. And God says, go ahead, go, go, I got you, I got your back, go ahead, go. Folks, what child is this, folks? He completes the question of what child is this is that he's compassionate, he's patient, he's selfless, he's sacrificing, sacrificing beyond measure, folks, that he was willing to go through the worst so we can have the best. He was willing to go through the worst so we can have the, wor- the, 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 the best for us, to have eternal life, folks, to have a relationship with him, folks, to have a relationship with him. For us, a child was born. Amen? That child was born to Mary, but that child is born to us too. Amen? 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 Does that feel good? Because the scripture says, for us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his wonderful shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Folks, the beginning of that verse is for us. Can you say for us? Say it like you mean it, man. For us. Amen. Say it like you mean it. For us. Amen. Can you see the reflection? Can you see the comparisons? And guess what? You and I, 
when we're available, when we're obedient, when we pull the trigger, okay, and we go, folks, that's what God's going to do something. And God wants to do something, not only today, but the next couple of weeks, man, invite somebody to church. Because you don't know when God's going to use you to minister, to, 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 to love on somebody. Especially these days where, you know, everybody's caught up on shopping and, and all the things that we do, you know, and stuff like that. I went shopping too. You see these new shoes here? I got some new shoes. I went shopping too. I'm, I'm, I'm just like everybody else. But can I tell you something? We got to reflect back to what the season and the reason for the, for the season is, folks. Come on. I got my shoes on sale. Amen. Folks, folks, I, I'm, I'm serious, but you know what? But, but you know, um, we got to ask ourselves this question, you know, a couple of weeks left, what can I do? And not, only, and not only, let's not just be a church to do things because we're in the season to do things. Let's be a church that does things every day. Every day that we're doing the thing, that we're spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we're igniting the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who are broken, those who are lost, those who need Jesus, folks. Not just because it's a special, we're doing skits, we're doing dramas and everything else, but what happens after Christmas? What are we going to do? Are we going to do what that says up there to ignite the gospel of Jesus Christ, folks? I love the season, but the, there's a season, there's a season every single day. From the time we wake up, folks, we got to ignite the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't be going through these cycles in church. Oh, let's do this, let's do this, because it's the season. No, 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 no. There's a season for Jesus Christ every second, every moment, 24-7. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's okay. You can clap. It's not for me. It's for the Lord, because I, I, don't, I don't need it. It's for the Lord. Amen. I want Alex to come up here, folks. What child is this? What child is this? From heaven to Mary to her womb to the cross. What child is this? From heaven to Mary to her womb to the cross. See, I can do drama too. Can I come join? Can I join? Can I join the team? Amen. From heaven to Mary to her wound to the cross. Folks, that's the child we're talking about. That is the child we're talking about. This is the child that said these words. And as I share them with you, you'll pick up where these words are coming from. Amen. Amen. What child is this? And as I share them with you, just meditate where they're coming from, okay? From heaven to Mary to her womb and to the cross. Meditate where these words are coming from. What child is this? Dear woman, here is your son and here is your mother. What child is this? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What child is this? Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. What child is this? I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Can you just imagine how loving God is? That at the last moment when he was at the cross, two criminals were right beside him and one of them was insulting Jesus but the other one says that man has done nothing nothing and at that last second and that last moment Jesus said he asked Jesus Jesus don't please don't forget me buddy please please don't forget me and Jesus says today you will be with me, with me in paradise folks that's the loving God that we have folks what child is this I am thirsty I am thirsty. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Mm. You know where these sayings are coming from? These sayings are coming from the cross, folks. The seven sayings of the cross. And then it says, it is finished. It is finished, man. That should be some excitement that comes into your, into your life right now. It is finished. He finished. He accomplished his purpose, his reason for you and I to have a relationship with him. It is finished. You can come to me. I have defeated death. You can come to me, folks. The debt of sin was completely paid. Amen? Amen? That's, the, that's it. 
Folks, you can be excited, folks. We can be excited. It's, it's, it's finished, folks. We can come to him. Folks, that's the child that we serve. That is the child that we serve, folks. So this Christmas, unpack the greatest gift that you have, which is salvation. And this is the gift that you can wrap and unwrap and wrap and unwrap and wrap and unwrap. You don't have to turn it. You don't have to return it. One size fits all. Amen? One size fits all. You don't have to return anything back. It's, it's done. It's finished. Okay? This, this, you don't have to look for a sale with Jesus. None of those things need to happen. Just unwrap the greatest gift that he's given you. That is your salvation. But I ask you this question today. Are you willing to give somebody something this year? The next couple of weeks. And if it doesn't happen the next couple of weeks, it can happen one month, two months, three months, six months. Give somebody this year and say, you know what, Lord? This year, just one, I'm going to win somebody for Christ this year. Amen. That is the greatest gift that you can do this year. Okay, we got a couple weeks left for 2017. It's gone. It's gone. 2018. I want you to say, make yourself this commitment with the Lord. Lord, not, not, not just 5, 10, 15 people, Lord, Lord, this is just one. Lord, I want, to, I, I want to win somebody for the Lord, and I want to do a couple of things. I want to minister to them. I want to be their friend. I want to love on them. I want to pray. I want to connect them to church. I want to walk with them. Those are the, those are the things. That's it. Ask yourself this question. Am I willing to do that this year? Just one person. If you can stand with me. I want to call the prayer partners forward. Amen. God is good, man. We've had some amazing services the last couple of weeks. And, I, and it's not because of me. It's because of the Holy Spirit, those involved in our services. God has been doing some amazing things. I, you know what? I, I, I was sharing in, in prayer, early prayer this morning that, you know, I, I'm, my wife and I, we're so proud of, 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 of you guys and those in leadership and those who are growing in the Lord and, and seeing just what God is doing in people's lives that, you know what, we're not just winging it here at Christ the Rock. People are praying. People are digging into his word. People are having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that was, that, those are the things that fill us as pastors, as a church, that we can see a Caesar this morning who's had an amazing devotional uh, this morning and he prayed and to see him growing in the Lord and to see some of you who are in this room just growing in the Lord is just amazing and amazing and amazing. And that's what this church is all about, to see you growing in the Lord, to see you expand your love for Jesus Christ and pass it on to others. I want every, everybody's eyes closed. Everybody's head bowed down. I don't know where you're at this, this December 17th. I don't know where you've been, but Jesus knows. God knows everything. I leave it to him. He's in charge. But if you are looking for something new today, this new year, if you're looking for something new to start a new, a new relationship with this Jesus that we're talking about, this God that we're talking about, if that is you, I want you to raise your hand. If you're looking for a fresh start this year, I see that hand right there. Amen. 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 I see that hand right there, brother. I love you, man. God bless you, brother. Amen. Amen. I saw that other hand up there. I see that other hand there too. Amen. I want you to pray a simple prayer with me this morning. It's as simple as this. Jesus, I thank you for being my Savior. I recognize I'm a sinner. I recognize that I failed, but I thank you I can have a new start in you. Forgive me of my sins. I know you can wash away all my sins, every sin, every single sin, and I'm a new creation in you. I thank you for coming into my life. As of today, December 17th, I dedicate my life to you, believing expecting and declaring your goodness, your protection, and your love over my life. I declare you today, my Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just received Jesus Christ into your life 
As simple as that, folks. As simple as that. I congratulate you. For those of you who raise your hands, why don't we give them a big hand? Amen. 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 As we close here at Christ the Rock, one of the most important things is prayer. Don't leave here without someone praying for you. If you're going through something, if you're asking God for whatever, I ask that you come up. Do not leave here the same because our prayer partners want to pray for you. And not only today, but they want to lift you up in prayer during the course of the week. And they want to walk with you. Build a relationship with people in your church because we want to pray for you. And the things that we pray up here are private between you and that person that's praying for you. That person has been selected, okay, because we trust them. They're mature in the Lord to know that whatever they share with you, vice versa, it stays private. So don't feel, don't feel ever that, you know, can I share this with somebody? Can I share that with somebody? Just have the opportunity to come up and pray with our prayer partners. And with that, I'm going to close in prayer and uh, have a great week. God bless you guys. You don't want to miss next week. Invite somebody to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity of of fellowship, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for the drama that took place here today, Lord God. We also thank you for the worship, Lord God. We thank you for sparking, Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us and through us in our service, Lord God. We just pray, Father God, that your will will be done this week, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that we would make ourselves available, Lord God, that we would be submissive, Lord God, because availability, Lord God, triggers submission, Lord God. We want to submit to you, Lord God. We want to be bold, Lord God. We want to proclaim your your goodness, the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who need you, Lord God. I pray that you give us the strength, Lord God, this week, Lord God, that you would allow us to open our mouths, Lord God, and to declare your goodness over people, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen and amen. Amen.